sing. Let's make it a happy party. Huh? Everybody yeah. join. Everybody, Everybody sing. Let's, uh, let's have a good time. <laughs> well, I try to smile. Sure, it's like the morning and spring. In the little Kalarish laughter, you can hear Quiet, everybody. Hello, Duffy's Tavern. What do you late make the Archie the Manger speaking? Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. What's new? Uh, nothing much. Uh, messenger just brought a package from that weight-reducing place, you know, the one that's been trying to take that blubber off your fat wife. <laughs> no. No, there's no message. Just a white flag. <laughs> huh? What else is new? Well, you know, Mrs. Piddleton, well, Abigail is now worth 100000 bucks, thanks to Italy. Uh-huh. Her third husband fell into Vesuvius. <laughs> Am I going to console her? D- better than that, Duffy, I'm going to marry her. Why? I got a lot of reasons. A uh, hundred thousand of them. <laughs> okay, so she ain't got legs like Betty Grable. She ain't even got legs like Harry James? <laughs> <laughs> Look, for a hundred thousand bucks, I'll be in a position to gamble that long skirts come back. <laughs> huh? What'd you say about Mrs. Piddleton? She's got a face that would what? Duffy, on behalf of my future wife, I resent that. The idea. A face that would stop a sundial. Maybe it wouldn't stop it, but it'd sure slow it down. Oh, yeah? I'll brook no more of these slurs on Mrs. Piddleton's ugly face, Miss Duffy. In a short time, I'm going to be making love to her. And I'm trying to get in the mood. And it ain't easy. <laughs> Why don't you go practice over there? Practice? What, what do you mean? Rub noses with the moose head. Rub, <laughs> rub noses with it. <laughs> That's a ridiculous comparison. Look at that moose head. Look at that long nose. Them bulging eyes. Them protruding teeth. <laughs> Darling! <laughs> My, what some men won't do for a hundred thousand dollars. It ain't the hundred thousand. It's the principal of the thing. Do the same thing for 500. <laughs> Besides, it might not be too bad. At least Abigail is sophisticated. You've got to say one thing. She knows plenty about this world. She ought to. She's been on it long enough. <laughs> uh, Archie, you ought to be ashamed. What do you mean? Marrying for money. Can you think of a better reason? How about love? I love money. <laughs> But what about Mrs. Pendleton? You know what she thinks about taverns and saloon keepers? Well, I covered that, Fats. When I asked her to come down tonight, I told her that Duffy's is not a tavern. I'll go along with that. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I, I told her we are now a tea room. Tea room? Ain't she going to be a little surprised when she gets that orange pico with a head on it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just... Tell her it's the tea that made Milwaukee famous. Some tea room. Look at that painting up on the wall. The painting? Oh, well, she's been up there for years. You, you think the picture's a little too daring? Well, it ain't Washington crossing the Delaware. Uh, uh, better turn her around. We'll use it as a dart game. <laughs> Now, what else can we do to tea room up the joint? Oh, how about going down to the antique shop and picking up a spinning wheel? Miss Duffy, there will be no gambling. <laughs> now, leave us see if there's anything else objectionable that should be removed. Uh, oh. oh, hello, Finnegan. What you been doing all day? Oh, nothing much. Just sitting around in cabin dishes under the parlor. Oh. Wasn't you taking a chance? No, no, I kept moving me arms around. <laughs> so, nobody brought up the question. Huh? Uh, nice atmosphere over there. Yeah, huh? Yeah. At least there's somebody to talk to. Who, Cavendish? No. Oh. 
Finnegan, how come you hang around a place like that? Why not? Uh, look at all the fun I had there last Tuesday. Fun at Cavendish's? Oh, yeah. It all started when I fell asleep in a back room. <laughs> and I had such a delightful surprise when I woke up. You did, huh? Yeah. All me best friends was looking down at me. <laughs> Well, why didn't you get up? With eight pounds of gardenias on my chest? <laughs> Believe me, Ike, it was a proud moment for me, like. Why proud? For the first time, I was guest of honor at a party. <laughs> Finnegan, are you sure that this was a party? Of course. The big crowd was there. Some guy was playing the organ. Everybody was formal and... Including me. <laughs> and boy, uh, you should have heard the compliments I received. Yeah, huh? what kind of compliments? Well, as they walked by, everybody said I never looked better in my life. <laughs> and are you quite sure that they was complimenting you? Well, sure. Dude, why else would they take me for that ride in the country? <laughs> Yeah, had a nice ride, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Only when we got to the picnic grounds, the party started getting a little rough. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, uh, I didn't mind when some practical joker threw me in a hole. <laughs> and then he uh, started throwing dirt in my face. <laughs> but when that guy reached in to yank off the tuxedo, that was going too far. <laughs> So what, what, what did you do? What did I do? I sat right up and I yelled out, Doctor, I am Clifton Finnegan. What did they do? They started throwing dirt in my face again. <laughs> Finnegan, why don't you go over in the corner and play alive? Oh, okay. Hey, fellas, wait for me. Oh, no. <clears throat> hey, that must be Mrs. Piddleton. Uh, hello, uh, Duffy's Tea Room. Mistress Archer speaking. Got it out. <coughs> hello, uh, oh, it's you, Mrs. Piddleton. Look, uh, Abigail, my love, why ain't you here? You're about to take your beauty sleep? Uh, look, you think we got that much time? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just bursting to ask a certain question, Abigail. Yes, is the hundred thousand in cash or in bonds? <laughs> Miss Duffy, please. What, Abigail? Uh, what should you wear tonight? Uh, well, how about that, uh, that gray hat? Uh, you know, the one with the heavy veil. <laughs> you wish I was more of a family man? Well, look, ain't it enough that there'll be you and me and the hundred G's? <clears throat> you got to have a family man, huh? Well, I'll tell you what, Pity. Uh, stick on a bustle and come on down. We'll talk things over. Swell. Hey, Bats, I'm an expecting husband. Uh, how about playing the wedding march? Your wedding march? Yeah. I'm in the money. Bats! <laughs> that is not a wedding march. Now play something else. Down in Louisiana, there's a boy who plays the piano. Plays it like you never heard before. He's got a face around and mellow. When he laughs, he shakes like jello. Weighs around 244. And when he plays, it sounds swell They stand around and beat their feet And clap their hands and yell Brother Fats Play me a tune Brother Fats Play it real soon Play it like you never ever played it before Take it from the intro and then play it once more Brother Fats Brother Fats Play that melody Play it on the bottom Play it on the top Play it in the middle don't you ever stop I want to hear those big hand pound Any time that I'm around Brother Fats Play me that tune Brother Fats Play it real soon Play it like you never ever played it before Take it from the intro and then play it once more Brother Fats Brother Fats Play that melody Yeah. 
Ah, Fats, that was great. I think I'll let you play at me wedding. Is there any money in it? There is for me. <laughs> Mr. Ar- <laughs> Mr. Archie, you know there ain't gonna be no wedding. Why not? You heard what Miss Piddleton said on the phone. She's looking for an old, substantial family type. Well, I've always been a home-loving man. Yeah, but who were you home-loving? Miss <laughs> Duffy, despite what some people infer, I can quite often be found dabbling around in the kitchen. Only because you take your bath in the sink. <laughs> yeah, but when I'm taking a bath, I'm still washing dishes. <clears throat> Anyway, what makes you such an authority on family life? Because Papa set such a wonderful example. Every night he comes home, flings open the door, and then you know what he does? Falls flat on his face. I'm not speaking of holidays. (laughs) He calls out to Mama, Where is my fat angel? He calls her angel, huh? Yeah. That's probably just wishful thinking. That's your opinion. But after all these years, Papa says Mama is the most beautiful woman in the world and that he wouldn't give up a single acre. (laughs) Oh, they were certainly made for each other. Yeah, hands just fit perfect around his throat. (laughs) Hmm. Archie, they haven't had a fight in years. Oh, occasionally they may quarrel over something like, say, pipe smoking in the living room. So Mama gives in. She smokes on the back porch. Well, I hope my bride will be more compatible. Uh, by the way, Finnegan, uh, yeah, I... has Mrs. Piddleton shown up yet? Is she about four feet tall and wearing short pants? Certainly not. Oh, then in that case, your little nephew just come in. Oh, well, it is me little nephew, Morton. <laughs> Morton, I guess you just couldn't stay away from your old Uncle Archie, hmm? Uncle Archie, I find you tedious, odious, despicable, and disreputable. <laughs> <laughs> ah, kids always love me. <laughs> but, uh, Morton, how come you ain't at school? Remember, Uncle, you did my homework for me? Yeah. That's why I'm not at school. <laughs> oh, well, uh, make yourself to home, Morton. Uh, by the way, you, you remember Finnegan, don't you? Indubitably. Huh? <laughs> Well, a lot of people have a bad memory for faces. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll have to make the introductions all over again. Uh, Morton, <clears throat> this is Clifton Finnegan. Delighted. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, glad uh, to meet you, too. Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, pleased to make your acquaintance? No, no. Uh, uh, likewise, I'm sure... That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> Ah, you still ought to get along great together. Uh, what do you think of Mr. Finnegan, Morton? Well, as Professor Hooten of Harvard would say, he's probably of human origin. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Morton. Don't go by what outsiders say. Finnegan, that was a compliment. Oh. oh. Well, uh, Morton, how's it uh, feel to be back in a tavern? I can answer that by asking you a question. What? Did I see a snake just pull its head in that bottle? Or is it merely the airway going down for the third time? Very clever, Morton. Uh, Too bad I ain't got a son like you. Uh, Now, wait a minute. Mrs. Piddleton wants a family, man. So? Morton, my son. What? Finnegan, meet me new son. Gee, Art, you look just like Morton. I am Morton. Oh, well, that explains your resemblance. (laughs) Uncle Archie, you mean I'm to help foster this delusion by impersonating your offspring? I ain't asking you to do that. I'm just asking you to call me Pop. That's all. Uh, But but what about Mrs. Piddleton? What about her? Won't she get wise that the kid is artificial? (laughs) Not at all. I'll be honest with her. I'll just tell her the kid is a result of a distant marriage. Well, Morton, uh, what do you say? Would you like me for a father? Well, in these days, I suppose you have to take what you can get. (laughs) Look, Morton, don't think of it as gaining a father. Think of it as losing an uncle. Well, now, that makes it a little more attractive. (laughs) I knew you'd say it my way, kid. Okay, Morton, you're now me new son. What price heredity? 
<laughs> Look, Mr. Archie, you ain't gonna fool Mrs. Pilton with that father stuff. What do you know about being a father? Well, I never raised no kids of my own, but what's the do it? When they're babies, you give them a bottle. When they're little kids, you give them a lollipop. And when they're in the teens, you give them ice cream. And when they're grown up, back to the bottle again. <laughs> hey, the Archer Dame is just coming through the door. Sideways? Yeah. That must be Mrs. Piddleton. <laughs> Fats. Yeah. Kindly announce Mrs. Piddleton. Okay. <laughs> uh, Fats, don't be such a wise guy. Archie, you dear, dear boy. Well, welcome to our tea room, Mrs. Piddleton. Or may I call you Abigail? <laughs> oh, please, no. Uh, lover? Oh, no, no. Wife? Oh, no. Try a mother. <laughs> We'll uh, save the name call until after we're married, but I'm forgetting the jovialities here. Uh, first, Mrs. Piddleton, may I express my heartiest condolences on your late demented husband? Well, Archie, Hiram was a fine man, and no one can say he wasn't thoughtful enough. To die? <laughs> Certainly not. I mean, he left me quite well off. Oh, but I'm finding out that even money has its worries. Abigail, leave me share your worries. <laughs> Archie, I think it's a little too late for us. Years ago, we should have met. Just think. We could have spent our time attending symphonies, going to the opera, enjoying chamber music, listening to lectures. Well, maybe it's just as well a pace like that would have burned us out by now. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? Huh? Oh. Okay. Mrs. Piddleton, we got to get married right away. Now, who was that on the telephone? The finance company. <laughs> Archie, are you only interested in me for my money? Oh, perish forbid. Now, come on, uh, leave us hold hands here in the corner booth, and I'll show you. Uh, Fats, uh, put out the lights. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hi, Abigail. You look good in this light. <laughs> oh, dear boy. You're such a flatterer. Leave me hold your hand. My goodness. Your hand is much smoother than I expected. Archie, you're holding my alligator bag. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> uh, tell me, Abigail, uh, would it uh, startle you if I was to suggest that we make a few advances? Whatever do you mean? Would you like to advance me a few bucks against that hundred grand? <laughs> I beg your pardon? <clears throat> Not ready yet, huh? <clears throat> okay, uh, leave us do it the romantic way. Uh, Abigail, you are the loot of my... I mean, the love of my life. <clears throat> And now I have a little surprise for you. Close your eyes. All right. Archie, take your hands out of that alligator bag. <laughs> Abigail, I resent your inference. Are you suggesting that I, the manager of a prosperous tea room, would stoop to filch you for a couple of crass bucks? Well, that's another thing, Archie. What? Um, is this tea room. What about it? You don't fool me a bit. In what respect? Well, tea rooms have, have lace curtains and dainty furniture and vases on the floor with flowers. Well, our vases used to hold flowers, too, but the tobacco juice killed them. <laughs> and, and another thing, the tea rooms have gypsy fortune tellers who read tea leaves. Well, we got a gypsy fortune teller, too. Really? Where is she? Well, she happens to be out at the moment buying some bifocals so she can read the smaller leaves. Say, Archie. Well, speak of the devil if it ain't Gertie the Gypsy. What? I am so glad you have returned, Gypsy fortune teller. Oh. I am the Gypsy, and I know many things, for I walk by night. Gertie, I know please the stick to the tea ladies. Never mind what you do by night. <laughs> now, uh, 
Uh, go ahead, Abigail. <clears throat> Give her your teacup. Oh, very well. Tell me, Gypsy, what do you see in the tea leaves? A fly. <laughs> That must have been left over from the consomme. <clears throat> now, continue, Gypsy. Do the tea leaves say what handsome, debonair gent will marry Mrs. Piddleton? Well, let's see. Oh, yeah, how to, to fung, kung wa. What's that? It's Chinese tea. <laughs> well, uh, try to translate as you go along. <clears throat> Very well. I see a young man in the tea leaves. Yes. He is very tall. Yes. And very handsome. Yes. He has bushy eyebrows and thick glasses. Why, Rodney Haybinder, what are you doing in there? Stuffy, stop trying to louse me up, will you? Georgine, I've had enough of this. You're deceitful and greedy and just after my money. I'm leaving this place. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. Peddleton. So, So the place ain't no tea room. And Miss Duffy ain't no gypsy. And I am to an extent after your dough. But it ain't for my own vile purposes. It's just that I was... Well, I was sort of thinking of the kid. The kid? Yeah. My little son, Morton. Archie, you a father? Did I let it slip? <laughs> but, um, but where, where is the mother... Well, I'm sorry you brought that up. It's a pretty sad story. Oh, what happened to her? She was killed in the crash of 29. <laughs> so you see, uh, Morton ain't like other kids. Why, oh, I, I don't say it's his fault. I guess he just inherited it from me. Well, what's the matter with him? He's a genius. <laughs> Studies day and night. Always under a microscope. <laughs> So, you're a family man, after all. Well, for the moment, yes. <clears throat> but Morton may not be with us very long. Why not? We can't afford the operation. What operation? Doctor says the kid's got to be operated on for the pickets. <laughs> the what? The pickets. Uh, malnutrition, you know. <laughs> got it from eating too much scurvy. <laughs> As I say, we ain't got the money for the operation. Oh, well, if this is the case, perhaps I ought to reconsider. Uh, by the way, who is your doctor? Hey, doctor, let's see. What is his name again? Uh... I am the gypsy. Not you I'm... this time. <laughs> uh, the doctor is uh, Dr. Slaughter. I'm expecting him any minute. Uh, will you excuse me? Hey, Finnegan. Uh, yeah. Finnegan, uh, could you be an M.D.? An M.D.? Oh, sure. Good. What does it mean? <laughs> In your case, it means mentally deficient. <laughs> now, you got it, Finnegan? Uh, I got it, Arch. Okay. Who are you? Well, don't be silly. You've known me for years. <laughs> Please, try to remember. Yeah. You're Dr. Slaughter. Dr. Clifton Slaughter. P.H.D. L.L.D. M.D. You don't have to spell it out, Arch. <laughs> I figured I'd be on the safe side. Now, now, what do you do first? Uh, I take out the kid's pulse. No. no. You think, don't take his pulse out. You, you just take them. Where? In a thermometer. Oh. Then you look through your stethoscope to see if he has any symptoms of cardiacs in his heart, see? Well, what if I find a couple, of? Well, then you simply say, this boy has Aunt Jemima pectoris. <laughs> In other words, the white corpse suckles is eating the red corpse suckles. <laughs> uh, look, uh, this is an awful lot to remember. Couldn't we just break the kid's arm? <laughs> don't louse me up again. Well, don't you? worry. Uh, just depend on me. I won't let you down. Promise? Promise. Man to beast? Man to beast. <laughs> oh, Morton. Yes, Uncle Archie. Uncle Archie. No. Pop. Okay. Pop. All right. Now, remember, you, you act like you're anemic, see? Anemic? Yeah, you can't remember a thing. <laughs> I don't want 
want you to tip your met. Uh, so, uh, Mrs. Piddleton. Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Piddleton, I would like you to meet my son, and I hope the future heir to our fortune. <clears throat> Hello, Mrs. Peddleton. My, what a fine young man. And where were you born? Chicago. New York. <laughs> New York. Chicago. <laughs> In two cities? His mother was traveling at the time. <laughs> I see. And um, how old is he? Ten. Twelve. Twelve. Ten. <laughs> And uh, how do you explain that? He lost two years changing schools. <laughs> yep, Mrs. Peddleton, that's the story. I've been both father and mother to this little trike. Sending him through school. Massaging his little brain before examinations. Washing his little pantaloons by candlelight. Mm, Morton, you should be very proud of your father. I am of my father. But that jerk. Uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Bill, you see, no memory. Suspicious anemia, Asia. Uh, I think we'd better have the doctor look at him right away. Uh, calling Dr. Slaughter. Calling Dr. Slaughter. Calling Dr. Slaughter. Benningham, that's you. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, dear, dear. I am Dr. Slaughter. Well, glad to see you again, Doc. You just got here in the nick of time. Yeah, she looks terrible. <laughs> The patient is Morton over there. Oh, 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 dear. Well, in that case, let me take out my thermometer. Well, just a minute, Doctor. Uh, that is a stethoscope. No wonder it won't fit in his mouth. <laughs> uh, look, Doc, uh, what do you want the kid to do? You want him to stick out his tongue? Why, is he mad at me? <laughs> oh, gee, you, what's the matter with this doctor? Well, he's a little dizzy. He spent the last six months testing cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, uh, Doctor, what is your professional opinion of this case? Uh, well, sir, uh, I just checked the boy's pulse against my pulse. Yes? One of us is dead. <laughs> doctor, you mean... Yes, sir, an immediate operation under Rita. But I ain't got no money for Rita. And if a certain lady does not say I do before I count three, well, afraid we'll just have to hit the kid over the head with the bone starter. Now, look, this has gone far enough, Uncle Archie. Oh. Uncle uh, Archie? Huh? More... Why, you give me that bone starter. Now, wait a minute, please, Mrs. Pendleton. Ouch! Ouch, me head! Good night! Oh, Morton. Morton, you dirty little crumb. On account of you, I've lost $100,000. Uncle Archie, don't think of it as losing $100,000. What? Think of it as gaining a son. Drop dead! Listen again next week, friends, to Duffy's Tavern, transcribed by NBC.